Hi and welcome to Training Tuesday. Hi, it's good to be back. And my, we just finished a big cycle with the World Class Goal Setting Workshop. And those of you who did it with us uh, already know what, what we're speaking of today. But again, if you hear it again now with you see different things about yourself that you didn't see before. And for everybody who's new, my name is David. And I'm the founder of the Tribe of Athletes. And what we do at the Tribe of Athletes is we help athletes learn to deal with self-doubt, understand, we help them understand the tricks that the mind is playing on them so that they can become the best version of themselves and really show the full potential at any or as close as possible to the full potential every time they on the court, off the court, in the water, outside of the water, it doesn't matter where. It's a mindset thing. And I'm telling you, the only thing, the only difference between you and the people that you idolize, and that's the same for me, by the way, is the mindset. It's when you study these people, I'm going to introduce you to one of my mentors today. When you study successful people, when you study successful athletes, they have a skill to see themselves in the future and they're free of doubt and worry and we're going to explore that today so this is going to be the first part of a series over like probably four or six weeks every tuesday we're going to continue to build on that okay and today we're going to lay the foundation so i want to introduce you to bob proctor okay i guess i gotta go on this side this guy's name is Bob Proctor, and he's what he's talking about is absolute world-class information. This is the kind of stuff that you are not being taught in school, and we're going to explore exactly what that knowledge is. And it's so, so powerful, and it's a universal thing, and it works in anything that you do. And Bob has spent, he's 87 years old, and he's, like, if he's taking the stage... If he's online, it doesn't matter. He, when he's coaching, mentoring, he is, he has the energy of a 35 year old and he spent his entire life from 26 to 87, just studying this. And, you know, so it's, he's not the only one. And what he's saying is we can brag about these things. We can brag about this knowledge because it's not our own knowledge. It's knowledge that's always been here, but we're breaking it down and bringing it to you. And again, this is not something that is commonly out there. And that is the biggest question that I have because we did a private Zoom training yesterday with a couple athletes and we all shared a, a question that we have about mindset. And for me, and I really mean that, the biggest question is why did nobody else tell me about all this earlier? Why did I only find out now? It, because that information is so, so, so absolutely critical it's so critical. We need to, we, we got to educate everybody on this. The law of attraction. There's different words for it. But the information I'm going to share with you is just going to be so important because when you understand, you will build self-confidence. You will build self-confidence and that will eliminate the self-doubt. But you have to understand. You have to increase your awareness of what's going on. And when you understand, when you start to see the end of the tunnel or like, you know, the end of that tunnel, you're going to be more likely to take action. You move into action, you'll build self-confidence and you go from there. And then it's after that, it's momentum. Okay. So we spoke about Bob. Now, his mentor or one of his mentors was Napoleon Hill. He wrote a classic Think and Grow Rich. And he's saying th something very, very important. And I want to share that with you. And it's an exempt from the book. Think and Grow Rich, and that guy, Napoleon Hill, spent 50 years researching the 500 most successful people in the world. And what I'm suggesting here is, again, it's not my knowledge. It's not Bob's knowledge, not Napoleon's knowledge. It's common, common knowledge. Well, not common knowledge. It's knowledge that was developed as humanity, but it's not really out there. But when those people dedicate their lives to finding out what successful people do, how they think, how they approach things, their mindset. It's like they probably know something that you don't know. And they probably know something that I don't know yet. Right? So we got to listen to these people. 
And I know it's probably not the answer that you want, that the only difference between you and the people you idolize is the mindset. We, we'd rather come up with all kinds of excuses, right? Oh, no, I don't have the good coach. Oh, I live in a diff difficult country. Uh, I don't have the money. I don't have the sponsors. We all have these excuses. But the fact is, and the truth is, you just don't have the mindset that they have. You don't have the Michael Jordan mindset. I don't have the Elon Musk mindset yet. That's the truth. So let's see what Napoleon Hill is saying about decision making, because in the end, it all comes down to decision. And that's a beautiful thing about being a human. You have a choice. Now, let's look at this. So Napoleon Hill about decisions, what he's saying, those who reach decisions promptly and definitely know what they want and generally get it. The leaders in every walk of life decide quickly and firmly. That is the major reason why they are leaders. The world has the habit of making room for the man or woman whose words and actions show that he knows where he's going. And isn't that true? Isn't that true that we feel attracted to leaders? And they decide swiftly and promptly because they don't need to know how they get there. They just, they, their decision is, do I want this? No? Okay, then it's a no. Do I want this? Yes, it's a yes. And they don't spend more time on how, on the how. They make the decision first. And then we say, oh, they have all the self-confidence that I don't have. No, they have the ability to look in the future and see where it's going. So now let's look what he said about indecision. Napoleon Hill, and there's so much wisdom in that like little paragraph. Indecision is a habit, a habit, which usually begins in youth. The habit takes on permanency as the youth goes through grade at school, high school, and even through college without definiteness of purpose, without a big dream. The major weakness of all educational systems is that they neither teach nor encourage the habit of definite decisions. How, how powerful is that? And again, nobody taught you how to make decisions. And I'm going to tell you how we can change that and what we have to develop exactly to become a good decision maker. Because as we just discussed, what are good decision makers? They're free of doubt and worry. They see the good, they, they see the good things. They see where they can go. They see the opportunity. And then guess what? It's going to come to them because the universe works like that. The universe operates by law. It doesn't matter if you believe it or not. And look, there is, and this is, this is what my mentor is saying, Bob. He's saying that absolutely there's people that are very, very successful, but they don't know how they do it. So they're, 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 you, you call that unconsciously competent. So the problem with that is, well, it's good for them. But if they don't understand how they do it, how they're being so successful, how they're attracting the right people, the right opportunities, how they create the luck that they're having. It is, first of all, it's not transferable. So you can't teach it to somebody else. And you wouldn't, wouldn't you want to do that? Well, once you figure that out, wouldn't you want to like share it with the people that you love? people that you can inspire because you're so inspired yourself. So that's one thing. It's not transferable. But then the other thing is it might not be repeatable because, you know, you, you might be like doing something really well in sports because you can see yourself as this champion. And so you do that. But then, you know, when that story is over for whatever reason, and all of a sudden the circumstances change, all of a sudden that doesn't work anymore. So what worked for you in sport might not work later if you don't know how you did it, right? And that's why we want to understand, okay? Now, I got a really nice slide here. You know, self-confidence eliminates self-doubt. It's as simple as that. There is, and how does self-confidence come? Like anything else. With time. But the self-doubt will be gone. And let's let's dive into exactly why that is now, okay? Let's dive into that 
and I'll show you in model. But first we're looking at this guy because he said something really cool. I'm gonna draw the model on my screen here later. So you guys, if you if you have a paper and a pen, please take some notes because the concept is so, so, so simple, but so powerful. Okay, so let's look at what Einstein said. The intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. Now, what does he mean? Okay, for that, share my screen one second here. Okay, for this, we're gonna explore this, what he means by the servant and what he means by the sacred gift. So to start out, nobody has ever seen the mind. Okay, this is like the, the first thing. Nobody has ever seen the mind. So let this big circle represent the mind. This is not the brain. This is the mind. Then you have the body. Body. Two arms, two legs. And your brain is a part of the body. It's not your mind. Okay, it's just simply sending out the electric signals, but it's not the mind. Okay. Then your mind has two as a bottom half and a top half. The top half is your conscious mind. Conscious. Okay. Your bottom is the subconscious. Now, the conscious mind is the thinking part. And you have, let's just put it this, thinking. And if you've seen this before, do it again, because we're going to go deeper today with um, exploring doubt. Okay. Now, what you need to know to, to start out is that the subconscious mind runs your body, okay? We're habitual creatures and there is so much going on. There's so many signals that go from the brain, it's so much to be regulated that the subconscious mind is doing that. You're not actively thinking about breathing most of the time and so on, right? So that's the subconscious mind that runs your body. And your body is on a certain vibration. Sometimes that feels good. Sometimes it doesn't feel good. But it's your subconscious running it. Now, if that's the case, you need your body to get into action. And it's the actions that will decide on the result that you're getting. Okay. But now we have our thinking. We have the conscious mind. We have our thinking brain here. Okay. Okay. Now, we have our five senses hooked up to this, here, on top. It's the five senses, and they are see, smell, hear, touch, and taste. And that is what Einstein means with the servant. We are very, in, especially in the Western culture, we're so, like, you know, drilled to, to, to visual, like, the visual world, like materialistic world. We're not being raised with like spiritual education or something, usually, right? In the East, it's different. But that's what he means. We're like in a society, we're very focused on our five senses. Now, how good are our five senses compared to animals? They're not good. Why are they not good? The animals, they blend in in the environment. They blend in and they have very good instincts and very good senses. Sometimes they have six senses or whatever, and they smell good and or they see good or whatever it is. They adapt into the environment. We humans, our senses aren't good at all. So what makes us these fabulous creatures? Why are we God's highest creation? What is it? And that is what you need to learn. And that is what is not taught in school. And I'm gonna write those, what I call, we call them the higher faculties. And they're going on in your conscious, in your thinking brain. You have control over this. And those faculties are perception. Please write those down, perception. We'll go through them in a second. Number two, memory. Number three, 
imagination. Number four, will. Wow, powerful, hey. Five, reason. Might have had some of that in school. And six, intuition. Those things are the higher faculties. And that is what you need to decide to develop to be successful as an athlete and as a human being. Those things. Now let's go through them. Perception. What is perception? Simple example. I was in sales. If, or let's use it now, my example. So I'm now working with professional athletes. If I have the mindset that when I reach out, that I'm annoying, I'm not sure what they think, what they think about me. You know, what if, if they tell a friend? What if they're annoyed? What if they unfriend me? So I have, I experience a lot of doubt within that mindset. I shift my perception with a little bit of information that I got. It's like a salesperson, you know, you're doing the person a favor because you know you have incredible information that needs to go out there. And the people that need to hear it, they will hear it and they'll come to you and they want it, they will beg you to work with you. And as a salesperson, you go out there and you don't stop until you get an answer. If somebody tells you, hey, you know, usually they say nice. It's like, hey, sorry, not for me. I'm cool. It's like, okay, cool. Good for you, man. All the best. Door is always open. But then you, the people that don't reply, you just keep adding value. Because, and all of a sudden they come back after two weeks and like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I forgot this. Thanks for reminding me. This is the best thing that happened all week. It's like, okay, cool. So now I assumed at first a different perception and now it's, it's, it's reality. I don't feel bad at all for sending stuff because I know this shit is fucking good. It will help you. It'll help you build confidence. As you understand, you'll build confidence and your, your world will change. So that's perception. Okay, simple thing. But you, a dog can do that. A dog can't like, oh yeah, let me let me think, you know, it could go that way or I could see it from, no. They don't have that cup. They have good senses. They smell good. They're playful, but they don't have that cup, those higher faculties. Memory. Did you know you have a perfect memory? It's just not trained very well. And probably they made you learn stuff in school and you freaking hated it. And if you hate it, how much are you going to learn? I mean, it's just common sense. If you love something, you get into it. Like, I love this material. I know everything. Not everything, sorry. That's not, that's not true. But I, I, it's going in like, and it stays there because I love it. If, you, if, you, if that memory, you know, there's people that they love to memorize their number pi. And that's all they do. And they love it. And they're really good at it. Perfect memory. It's here. Imagination. Wow, that's the skill to go and to see, have you ever seen a cow fantasize or did you ever see that cow that looks like it's fantasizing how the future is going to go? But you definitely see it in kids and hopefully some adults, hopefully with yourself. But we have this beautiful skill to go in the future, to see the future. I mean, what else do you want? It's just not very, it's just not very, and that's the gift that Einstein was talking about. You just haven't developed it. You just haven't developed it. That's all. Okay. Four. Will. How powerful. David Goggins. I don't know if you know him, but I mean, that guy's all about willpower. It, he's done anything. There's nothing that can get that guy down. It's absolutely crazy. Go look him up on YouTube. He has phenomenal videos up there. He's all about willpower and he's so good at that. And he's inspiring the whole world. It's amazing. The reason. All right, reason we might have had a little bit of school. Okay, I'll give you that. And then intuition. Do you know we can connect to each other? Even if we're far, far, far away. That, you're, that you have sensors in here that can pick up energy and thoughts and, and, and things. You're just not aware of it because you're not trained in it. Nobody ever showed you. That's the only thing. That's why we need to understand ourselves. You have to know yourself. You have to, you have to study. You have to learn. You have to put in the time. You have to block time for this. Because like, wait, how, did you, how did you learn how to write? Just practice a lot, right? How did you learn how to ride a bike? 
practice a lot. And some poor guy, probably dad or mom, had to, you know, push you in the back and make sure you don't always fall off. How did you become good in your sport? Through repetition. So there is no secret. But you have to. That's the decision you have to make. You have to make a committed decision. You don't know where it's going to go. You don't know how it's, stuff is going to happen. But you have to make a, con, con, a committed decision to learn more about this, to study this material. Okay? That's what you have to do. Now, okay, we got that covered. And I have something else planned. Because, I mean, I know it was a lot already, but... Um, the cool thing is, guys, it's really, it's really true. It's because I've worked with executives before and working with athletes, it's just a blessing. And I feel so grateful that I'm now in a position to do that um, because you have, you have this urge to grow and you understand that you set goals, not just to get things, you, you set them because you want to grow. And we always have something in us that is trying to keep us where we are. But we also have something in us that wants to expand and wants to grow. And what's, you know, the, the, the stuff that is trying to keep you where you're at is like your ego. Okay. And your spirit, on the other hand, this, you know, you're a spirit having a physical experience on this planet. And I'm not, I'm not going to elaborate on that, but it's also interesting questions. Where are you coming from? Where are you going after this life? You know, who are you? Interesting question. But the point is this. Now I forgot what I wanted to say. <laughs> Good. Good. Good job, David. Spirit. Oh, yeah. So you have what's keeping you where you are, and you have the spirit that wants to expand. So that curiosity that you're sitting with me for now 20 minutes, and you're still here, that curiosity, never, ever let that go. This is the spirit that wants to expand, that wants to grow. And do you remember when Napoleon said about the indecisiveness is coming from not having big dreams? Because when you have big dreams, and that's what you see with those like successful athletes and successful people, they have a dream. Even though they don't know how to get there, they have the dream and step by step, they go for it and they build the self-confidence and they make the decision promptly because, again, they didn't need to have all the positives and all the negatives. That's so, it's such a powerful concept. And then you build self-confidence and that will just eliminate the self-doubt. It's not that you need to get rid of self-doubt and then you can do something. That's just an excuse. There's nothing that needs to be in place besides you really wanting it and then the rest will fall in place but you have to see it you have to be able to see it and i'm telling you it is not enough if you haven't you know my friend my best friend was over the other day and he he was telling me that he's having these daydreams coming once a month to him you know like they come and they go you know, what happens if you go to the gym once a month? Nothing. Literally anything you do in life, if you do it from time to time, nothing is going to happen. So there is no secret to this. It's exactly the same thing because your subconscious mind. And let me let me um, explain that. So I'm, I'm pivoting a little bit. I don't want to cover as much. We're going to continue next time. I really just want to drive this point home. Okay, let's drive this point home. Your subconscious mind. When you, when you came to the planet, it looked like that. That was your, that's one half of your mind. Here's your body, arms and legs. But your subconscious was wide open. You didn't have the thinking capabilities at the time. When you were a baby, you were, you were not thinking. You were just, uh, yeah, happy, happy, happy. You're just imitating when somebody was laughing. You were laughing because they did, they laughed in the beginning. I know we want to think differently. And there's probably a time when the baby is really, really like feeling the, the, those emotions that we're feeling. But in the beginning, they're like in a hypnotic state. And it's their brain is not in thinking. Like when you look at the brain waves, neuroscience can do that nowadays. 
it's the brain waves are in a hypnotic state. It's as if an adult is hypnotized and it goes straight into the subconscious mind. I'm sure you heard that. Okay, so what does that mean? That means a little bit like the body, some of it is programmed by the, you know, by the DNA. And it's coming from your ancestors. No doubt about it. That's why you look so similar. But then the mind is being filled with all the outside influences, all the outside factors, and they go straight into the subconscious mind. Now, why do you think that children that have a traumatic um, upbringing with a lot of fights at home, a lot of insecurity, maybe, um, how do you say that? Um, I'm missing the word, you know, fighting going on and so on at home. So that burns right into the subconscious mind. And by the time they are about six, seven years old, when they develop these thinking capabilities, that's why they send them to school at the point, it, the subconscious, it's kind of like, it almost closes, but it's already in there. And you have a self image about yourself, who you think you are. And it's not just a self image, it's also the ideas that were given to you about how the world works. And that's burned in there. And that is not dependent on you as an essence, as the spirit that you are. It depends on where you grew up geographically. It depends on what gender you got. I mean, for God's sake, now, when you come to this planet, you don't even know if you're a boy or a girl, but they give you, if you're a boy, they give you blue here in Switzerland. If you're a girl, they give you pink. You get all these labels. You didn't pick them. They're just given to you. They were just given to you. So it doesn't, it doesn't depend on anything. It doesn't depend on, 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 on the education. It's, well, <laughs> well, it does. So let's put it the other way. What I wanted to say is that your subconscious mind, what you get about your self-image is it depends on your circumstances. It's, it depends on geography. It depends on gender. It depends on environment. That's, that's what it is. So it's not you. That's the important thing. You didn't choose this. It's old programming that was given to you. And now my question is to you, and you got to make a choice. Is that one how you want to let your, do you want like this to let your life drive for the rest of your life? That self-image that you're having about yourself that is outdated. And let me tell you what, that self-image, as we said, it controls your body and that controls the actions and that controls the results. So if you're not happy with your results that you're getting, if you're confused, you might like know a lot of things, but the results don't show that. And you gotta ask yourself, I'm telling you why. It's the self image that you hold about yourself and the paradigms, the thing, how, the, the, how you think the world works. The truth is you don't know how it works. None of us really knows how it works. So it's you to make a decision and say, okay, I'm going to change the self image. And as you change it, you will set your body in a different vibration. As your body is in a different vibration, you will go out and take different action. And your body is a vibration of molecules and will send out a different vibe. It will send out a different vibe and attract a, a new vibe. It will be a whole new game. And you can't think physical here. This is, this is the mind. Nobody's seen the mind. Right? So you have to make a decision. And that's the point. Like, this is what I want to drive home for today. It starts with a decision that you make to dig deeper into this, to, to commit and to find out. What makes successful people so successful? And when I tell you that I read, like it doesn't matter how many books I read. I'm just telling you, I'm also reading other people's books that spent their entire lives doing nothing but that. And they, they like have the result. I don't have the results that I see in my mind yet because I'm not there yet. But there's people that live their entire lives like that and they do. They change millions of lives. And when you look at the people that do inspire the world, it's the people with the big dreams. And often they're not aware, I give you that, they're not aware of how they do it. But wouldn't it be so beautiful to understand 
how you do it so you can do it and repeat it in whatever you do. If it's in relationships, if it's for your sport, if it's being a good mentor for others, if it's about making money. I mean, how many times have I heard like the money excuse? You know, here, the thing is, if, if your result, the people that are making 50,000 a year right now, they're not making 50,000 a year because they choose to. It's because they don't know how to make 250,000. Because they don't see themselves as worthy of making that. They're thinking in, in not in abundance, but in that there's not enough. Like if you have debt, and, and, you know, I've learned a lot of this in the financial context, but if you have a lot of debt and you're thinking about how to get out of debt, just how many times I say debt, 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 where's my focus on debt? But what happens if I start to write down my goals and every, do every day I write them down every day with my, with the daily system that I taught a lot of, um, the, the athletes that were in the workshop, if you tune into that, all of a sudden it's like, oh. I could earn money. What a concept. And with that, your subconscious is starting to look for answers out there. You start to send out different vibe. You're going to attract things that you can't see, feel, hear, taste, smell right now. And maybe never can, but it, you know, because we can't, these energies that are going on, we can't see them probably never will. Okay, so that's the point that we got to dig into this topic. Okay, and I'm going to do everything in my power to bring that to you, to bring that knowledge to you and to give it a nice like athletic twist. Because and, and again, I just want to say like, I, I so much appreciate working with you because you, you I can feel you want it. And so, you know, we, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We just we, we got to study what's working and do more of that and start to really, really focus, really, really focus on that. Okay. And uh, so next time when we come back, I had a little bit more prepared. Um, we're going to take that model about the mind and the body, and we're going to expand and we're going to look at, you know, what happens to a person that is going into doubt and fear, or let's just say worry and doubt, let's put it that way. And the person that has knowledge, and then a choice to react completely different. Okay, but it started again, it started with the knowledge because if you don't know what's going on, you feel like a victim automatically. But if you know what's going on, you have a choice. You will have a choice and it's such a beautiful thing. Okay, so please, if you got value out of this, just you know, give me a YouTube like, please. I'm trying to build the channel up because I feel like video is where I want to be to have these sessions because it's really quite cool. Zoom sessions for interaction, YouTube for education. Subscribe to the channel to be updated if you'd like. And also these training Tuesdays, there's every Tuesday at nine o'clock. I suggest as an action step, you, and I will give you more action step next time, but put it in a calendar. It's, you know, we're going 30, 45 minutes. Just put it in a calendar every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Central European time. I know there's the, there's the replays. There'll always be there. But just think what message you send to your subconscious, to your, the self-image. What The, the self-image doesn't speak English. It learns through experiences. And when you say, okay, this is important to me. I'm going to block time. This is an action. This is an experience you're having. And your subconscious is going to learn from that, that this is important. And it's already, besides the fact that you're more likely to show up and, and enjoy the training and learn, which will make you bolder and give you self-confidence, it just sends that strong signal to the subconscious, this is important and we got to pay attention and you're going to learn more quickly and develop those higher faculties okay, that we talked about. So I know it was a lot. We'll repeat a little bit next time. Bring a friend as well. Invite them. Let's, let's spread the message. And I mean, sooner or later, I'm sure... I want to, you know, I want to see you guys spread that knowledge as well. So let's learn it. Let's master it. And then let's see how we can improve each other's lives. Okay. This is powerful stuff. It was great spending the uh, evening with you. And if you're watching the recording, thanks for checking in and I'll see you next week. Okay. Ciao, ciao.